What's up guys, my name is Dr. Antonio Webb, Orthopedic Spine Surgery Fellow. In this video, and over the course of the next few videos, we're going to be talking about suturing. How to suture like a surgeon. We will go over the different types of sutures, the different instrument ties, how to throw surgical knots, what is suturing, and some other tips for you guys. I want to thank the sponsors of this video, Artagia, and the people over at suturekit.com for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check them out in the description for some discounts for you guys. So, suture practice kit is something that I wish I would have had as a medical student, and whether you are in nursing school, in school to be an EMT or paramedic, medical school resident, this suture kit or any other suture kit out there is something that you can use to practice at home, at work, or when you're away from the hospital. When I was in medical school, one plastic surgeon recommended to me that I use my steering wheel at every red light and I throw a surgical knot. And I did that for a number of years until I got comfortable throwing surgical knots by myself. So even if you're starting off slow, one person versus another person, everyone gets to that same level throughout your medical training. It takes a lot of practice. You just have to practice at it. And this kit is something that is really essential if you wanna become a surgeon, emergency medicine doctor, dermatologist, or whatever specialty that you go into, I think it's important to practice. So this uh, suture kit, practice kit here, is something that um, comes together in a really convenient box. Uh, there's 25 pieces on the inside of this, and there are multiple different types of sutures. There's a nylon, there's a silk, and these are all the types of sutures that we use kind of in the hospital, in surgery, or in the emergency room. One of the cool things is that it comes with this Make Life skin hair. So this product is designed to replicate the natural skin. It has three layers to it. It has a fat layer, it has a skin layer, as well as a uh, dermis, an epidermis layer. Inside the package here also is the instruments. Number one, this is a needle driver here. This is a instrument that we use in surgery. One of the most important things to know about this is palming the needle driver. Some people palm the needle driver with their thumb inside this little circle here, but I think it's actually better to palm it with your palm. That way, when you're handing off instruments to the surgical tech or to another surgeon, you can easily do that. If you have your fingers or your thumb in this circle, here is actually harder to take your thumb out and then hand it. What I did as a medical student was I walked around the house, I got one of these from the hospital, and I opened and closed this all throughout the day and then came more comfortable with doing that. The second instrument that's in here is actually a hemostat. This is when we're grabbing certain tissues. If we have a suture that we need to grab that's deep in the wound, we can use this to grab that particular object. If we needed to grab a vessel, we can use it to grab a vessel. And the same thing, you want to use your palm to open and close it. The third thing that's in this kit is a blade. They actually come with different uh, blades that you can use to cut the skin. This blade here can be attached to this instrument. You have to be very careful, this is pretty sharp. So this goes on like this here, and to be careful, you wanna lock it in place. So if we needed to cut the skin, or hopefully not cut anybody, um, this is uh, pretty sharp, so just be careful. But this is uh, a knife or a blade. There's different sizes. This is an 11 blade. They have a 15 blade, which is smaller, but uh, this is a blade that we use in surgery here. The next instrument that we have is the Addison Pickup. This is a instrument that we use to grab tissue or to grab the suture itself. It has little teeth at the end here, and you basically hold it like a pencil when I'm suturing. This is how I hold the Addison Pickup. The last instrument that we have here in the uh, kit is a pair of scissors. And this is a pretty 
smaller size uh, scissors that we would use in surgery, but um, it's great for practicing. Um, after you tie your suture, you want to be able to cut it and then move on to the next suture. So. so the two big types of sutures are absorbable sutures and non-absorbable sutures. Absorbable sutures are ones that don't need to be taken out from the patient. Say for instance, the patient has a laceration on their arm and then some deep sutures are placed. These sutures can be like vicryl or monocryl. Anything with a krill on it, that's the way I kind of remember it, are absorbable sutures, and these don't need to be removed from the body. Conversely, a non-absorbable suture is like nylon or silk. These are sutures that do not absorb. They need to be taken um, out of the body, or sometimes we use them to ligate vessels. So this is a non-absorbable suture, nylon. Silk is a non-absorbable suture. And then Vicryl is a absorbable suture, which means we can place these in the patient and over time the body will absorb this suture. If we talk about the sizes of sutures, it's conversely related to the number. So a 7-0 suture or an 8-0 suture is actually a very small suture and a 1-0 or a 2-0 or a 3-0, these are fairly large sutures. So this is a number one it's a fairly large suture. We use this to close the fascia or any deep kind of layers of the uh, skin. And this is a 5-0 as well as a 4-0. So these are smaller sutures than this 1-0 um, vicryl here. So this comes in the kit and it's actually good because it comes with different size and different types of wounds. In the emergency room as well as in surgery, you may have incisions or lacerations that go in different directions and you should be comfortable and be able to suture whether the laceration is this way or this way. So when you pick up your needle driver as well as your Adsen pickup, Usually I hold it, like I said, in my palm, and then we have our suture here. You want to pick up your suture kind of at the two thirds of the way back. And I like my suture to be turned this way here. So not 90 degrees, but a little bit more than that. So I think it's easier to come in and out of the skin that way. You don't want your needle driver to be very close because when you're trying to grab skin here, this will not allow you to pick up much tissue and you don't want it too far back towards the suturing um, aspect of the uh, needle. So about two thirds of the way back. And you see I have my needle driver in my palm here, my AdSense pickup in my left hand, I'm holding it like a pencil here. The first thing we're gonna do is throw a simple interrupted suture this suture uh, should be placed a few millimeters from the skin edge here. So I'm going to use my Adsen pickup to lift up the skin here and usually about 90 degrees, a few millimeters away from the skin edge. You can take it in two bites, which means that you go through the middle first and then you throw another one on the opposite side or you can take it in one bite. Once you have your suture and your stitch thrown, you want to pull it all the way so that this tail here is not too long and you're still able to tie the suture. So I usually leave maybe a couple of centimeters kind of out this way because if you leave too much suture this way, you're gonna be wasting suture. So I think it's important to just leave a little tail. The first thing you wanna do is to place your needle driver in between your two suture kind of edges, right in the middle. And what we're gonna do is wrap that around the needle driver twice and then grab that smaller edge. So we'll do that again, once, twice, and grab that small edge, and then you want to pull your hand in the opposite direction. So we wrap the suture around the needle driver twice. The second time, you don't have to wrap it twice, we can just do it once. So once, and then you're carrying your right hand in the opposite direction to lay down that knot. Now we're going to do the opposite way to lock this knot. 
We're going to go not in the middle here, just under the longer suture and wrap it around once and then go the opposite direction. So most sutures, you don't have to throw multiple knots, but some sutures, this knot can easily slide. So you want to throw multiple knots. So we're going to throw a couple more so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Needle driver right in the middle, wrap it around twice and then grab that edge and then pull it through. We're going to do that again. The second time you just need to throw it once. And then the third time, it's not here, it's just the opposite. Wrap it around, grab the edge, and then that's your knot there. So that's a simple interrupted suture. So we're gonna try that suture again, a simple uh, suture. We have our needle driver with the needle, it's about two thirds of the way back, and then our Atsin pickup. You wanna grab the skin edge a couple millimeters away from the laceration or wound, 90 degrees. And at this time, we're actually gonna take it in one bite. Sometimes I take it in two bites, depending on the size of the wound. Other times I take it in one bite. You wanna pull your needle kind of through and then curve it in the direction of the needle. You don't wanna pull straight up, you wanna pull it so it comes out in the direction of the needle. As soon as you pull it through the skin here, you should be able to grab the needle, but you have to be careful. This needle is sharp. So we're going to pull this through. We want to make sure that this edge here of the suture is not too long. The needle driver goes right in the middle, and then we're going to wrap it twice, and then grab this suture, and then move our right hand to the left as you can see the knot going down. We're gonna do that again. The second time, you just do it once. Right hand goes to the right this time. And then the third time, we'll lock it. It's not here, it's here, around. Pick that edge up and then lay that down. So that's a uh, simple knot. Right in the middle, we'll do a couple more. We we'll do it twice. Move our right hand to the left. Right in the middle again, only one time this time. Move our right hand to the right. And then the third time to lock the knot, you wanna put it on the outside, wrap it around, grab it, and move your right hand to the right. Couple other tips when handling your needle, you wanna make sure that you protect it like this here. So when you hand this back to the surgical tech, the needle is protected and it doesn't stab anyone or poke anyone. So you never want to hand back the needle to your surgical tech or to another person like this here. You always want to protect that needle. Be careful just touching the edge of the needle. You can get poked. Protect your needle. Whenever I hand this back to the surgical tech, I always let them know, hey, there's a needle that's on the table. You communicate with the surgical team, the rest of the surgeons, the, the surgical assists, that there's a needle that is um, on the surgical table. So I wanted to thank the sponsors of this video over at Artasia and SutureKit.com for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check them out. This is a series of four videos on how to suture like a surgeon. I hope you guys learned something and we'll see you in the next one.